Hi, David Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete. It's pour day. This is what we've been all waiting for. See those logs there? I set those up to bridge that uh, formwork for that brick ribbon. It just so happened a guy was cutting a tree down next door. So I said, hey, give me some of those logs. I'm going to use those. And they worked out beautifully because they roll back and forth with the surge of the hose. So it was uh, magnificent. Now we have a 12 foot aluminum. On this little angle here, the reason I did that, initially we had it squared off, but it didn't line up with the corner of the house. So I said, you know what? I want my joints to come straight off the corner of the house, straight across to the other corner. So I moved, I, I put that 45 in there just so I could line up my joints. That's all that was. There's the used motor oil, motor oil right out of my truck. It's a mobile, mobile one synthetic full synthetic I diluted a little bit with some diesel fuel just so it would go through the sprayer here's our concrete truck we have Bender out here today right and sit right out of Santa Ana and then of course we have stable and we got a clog right when we started working the the hose clogged up it started at the reducer and it backed all the way up to the back of the pump so we had to break it all down This is a 3000 PSI with fiber mesh in it. And I just add the fiber mesh when the truck arrives. I do about one pound per yard. It's just a little something special I throw in there. It helps me with uh, shrinkage cracks, you know, in, in hot weather. And it also um, allows me to saw cut early and not get any spalling on my saw cut edges. Now we've got just some uh, recycled broken concrete as a base here that's been compacted with a plate compactor. We only have about two inches of base in here. But at the bottom on the city, city work, we got actually six inches of road base. That rebar you see there, we're just lifting it up as we go. Because concrete is as stiff, we're pouring this as stiff as it is, and it's got all that rock in there. When we pull it up and the concrete goes under it, the rebar won't go back down. That's a number three rebar at two foot centers. This pad happens to be, uh, this entire driveway is going to be five inches thick. Until we get down to the city, the off-site work. That's the city sidewalk, the apron approach. That is actually 3250 and six inches deep. Here's a four foot wood bowl float. And he had just oiled that with my uh, mixture. So that helps preserve the wood on the bowl float as well. Also, all my 2x4s will be reusable because I keep them wet with oil. Also, I like to spray my wheelbarrow with that oil too. This job ends up going about 23 yards. It worked out great because the first two loads, which is 10 each, got us right down to the city work. So I was able to switch up on my third load to the Big Rock 3250 PSI to drop the approach in at six inches. I just got lucky on that, on where it ran out. But all this formwork you see here, that's for brick ribbon. I'm going to use split bricks, which are half half depth brick, and then I'm going to set them right on top of the concrete that we're pouring. Everything's monolithic here, basically. The rebar runs through everything. The brick sets in that inset there. That way, when you drive anything over this, the grout for the brick, the brick is not going to go down, or the grout's not going to fail. 
because it's all one piece. And the rebar assures you of that. Also what the brick will do, this is a little Fresno here, but what another thing the brick, these recessed areas will do, because I'm going from five inches thick all the way down to three and a half inches thick concrete underneath that step down, it creates a, a weakened plane joint basically. So the concrete's gonna crack there. It's gonna crack in between the mortar joint, the brick, and the concrete, which is ideal. And to assure that that happens without affecting the grout, I'll edge the grout on the brick so we have a nice clean break without affecting the uh, grout itself. So we just ran out right there. It was just luck. I thought I was going to end up going into the other, you know, into the on-site with my my third truck a little bit. And I was just going to pump it up a little bit with the on the PSI anyway. But we got lucky there. Here's the um, third load. You can tell the rock's much bigger here. And since we're tailgating it, I can put it down at any slump that I want. Now, in the previous video to this, to this one, we did um, the demo and the setup. Because this is going to be a three-part series. This is part two. On the third part, we're going to be showing the saw cutting and the brick ribbon inlays. Also in that first video, we showed the horizontal curb cutting of this existing curb face. Now, because we're on a slope here, it did slump off a little bit from that top edge, so we had to sprinkle back. And it was crucial that we did. Otherwise, the brick would have been on a radical slope at that point. Wouldn't have looked real pretty. Also, we may have had to chip the base where the brick sets on because it would have been a lower area there. So when you're pouring it, you got to stay up to the top of form, especially when you're using... Um, when you have an inset of some sort and you don't have a lot of space. Here's your funny trowel. This area in the back corner stays shaded all day. This little walkway went off pretty quick. Now we're just hand joining it. We got a half inch edger, half inch radius, three quarter deep joiner hand joiner there which matches our walking joiner now I'm gonna go ahead and throw the um, power trowel on here that's a three foot power trowel first off I'm gonna hit it with just a pan float pan which is something I add to the bottom of the blades that way I can get on there a little earlier flatten it out So I'll hit everything with the float pan to start with. Then after I do that, I'll pull the pan off and just hit it with the blades only. And if you notice the pattern I'm running here, I'm floating right and then I'm coming back left. Everything's half overlap on the machine. But you'll notice the technique a little better when we take the pan off. That's a five and a half horse Honda engine on there. It's a no name brand, but it works fine. Hi, David O'Dell here. Uh, Avery came out to the job site, his first day on the job site. He came all the way from, uh, where was that? Victorville. Victorville, yeah, that's a nice haul from from there, especially because yeah. that's the traffic flow in the morning going this way. 
probably took them two hours, you know, in about, what is that, 30 miles, 35? Yeah, around there. It's not that far, but it's a lot of a lot of time. All right. It's just a freeway log up, jam, log jam. But anyway, this is the first day on the job with a, you know, you've been watching the videos, my videos, for how long? Just over two years now. Two years. So he got a lot of experience just watching. And uh, you would attempted to do your own, and you actually completed your own project right. with color hardener. You did an uh, addition to your pool deck. Yes. Uh, you want to tell them about the experience today and then on the job as well, on your Alrighty. job? So, as uh, many humans, uh, you learn the hard way. I wish that I, I could have called Mr. Odell a long time ago to learn how to correctly pour and finish concrete. Uh, just um, looking over the Odell family and uh, all his crew members, uh, there's a lot of little things that you may not catch on camera or videos or just talking about it. Uh, you actually have to put your hands on the job and um, get your hands dirty. And I did that and I learned with Mr. Odell and I feel like I'm on another level compared to a um, do-yourselfer, which um, I've done in the past and I think I'm going to take a lot of these little traits that Mr. Odell has brought to me. Yeah, right on. Good info, Avery. All right, um, All right. let's get our hands dirty again. Okay. All right, good. What you should do first on these, okay. before you do anything, is uh, clean the edge, top of your form, so you can really see the edge. Alrighty. And then you're not getting the, the old crusty stuff keeps falling back okay. into it. Then, you probably want to kind of work, work the edge first. Okay. Work it first. I put a little steam. See, I'm grabbing, yeah. see, I'm grabbing the steam right here. I see, yes. Throw that That's over there. Yeah. Does the edge kind of look rolled, to okay. be honest with you? Then you can take your edge, or and you don't have to really struggle that much. Yeah. See that? Yeah. It just goes down smooth now. Now you have to work that edge very really hard. Got it. Yeah. There. That's how you want the edges all to look. Okay. <laughs> Go for it. Let's try it again right over right. here. And uh, it looks like you were trailing a little bit, well, a little hard with pressure. Yeah? Yeah. First clean the edge. Scrape off that excess. Now we're in your trowel. Get it nice, everything nice and flat all the way to the top of that board. Now the whole thing flat or just the edge? Everything. Yeah. Now you can see, where, see how it's low on the edge? Since you ran that trowel, see where it didn't yeah. touch? Okay. That means it's low there. Okay. Now you gotta go again with your trowel and grab some cream. Did you pull up some cream? Just a bit. When you want cream, you gotta really, you gotta hold it at more of an angle. Okay. And then I you see. get the cream. Okay. See? Yeah. And you gotta have a quick flick of the wrist to keep it there. Okay. Here, set this end up right here. Yeah, you got some that time, yeah. Mm -hmm. Little more of an angle up. Get, grab some cream and hold it up. There you go. Yeah. Now smooth it out. Now do a nice smooth trout. Now you got some cream in the right places. Now you're ready to run the edge all the way through. And then you knock out your edge line and you're done. All right, that was interesting. Yeah, he came out here, and it was nice to have him out here. I've had about four different guys that have found me on YouTube just come out to learn, and it's always interesting. But anyway, uh, Avery ended up becoming a full-time employee also now. I mean, he's been out here about four jobs now. So I decided to hire him. Here's the apron approach, and there's that 50% horsehair, 50% nylon jewel, putting a perfect texture on it. Now all this bottom portion is all inspected by the city before we could do anything. Also, planning looked at it to see if you could put the approach there. So you have to have a certain amount of space in between the two driveways to even get two driveways entrances. 
So I just took the fo float blade off of that power channel and we're just running blades only. Down here in the bottom end it was too wet so we just went ahead and kneeboarded it. The machine would have been there at least another three hours probably in this back corner. I pulled all the steel stakes out on those ribbons early that way they wouldn't get locked into the concrete and I could pass my power trial over real easy without hitting any stakes now if you notice that last section there I just power child it now I'm funny trialing it and that'll be the final pass The nice thing about running a power trial is one thing it does is it flattens it out. Another thing it does is it really consolidates the surface because of the weight of the machine. So you end up with a harder surface basically. Make sure you stay tuned for um, the third part of this series. We're going to show um, the saw cutting and we're going to show how to install the brick inlays for this. I didn't use any curing compound on this one because the homeowner was here and uh, we had water hoses front and back so he was just going to keep it wet for about three days watering it every uh, couple hours now you notice this little box out here that's for actual gate post the gate guys couldn't get in here before us or during the demo to put their post in so we had to leave a hole there that they'll get filled eventually so I did put a couple hand joints in the day of just some major crack points that could crack overnight if you don't get them in but the rest will all be saw cut I'm going to be running a cut all the way down the middle it's about 100 feet long and then about every um, about every 8 feet so we have 8 foot sections But that's what makes a beautiful RV parking area right there when you have that kind of space. Anyway, thanks for watching and stay tuned for part three. Have a good one.